For the last two weeks, we talked about Islam, Iman, and we talked about the qualities of Muslims and Mu'mins. And today, we will talk about Hadith, talking about Munafiqeen, or talking about the qualities of Nifaq. This Hadith, reported by Abdullah bin Am bin Al As, radiyallahu taala an, and we already talked about. Abdullah bin Awf bin Al-As, so we don't need to talk again. And in this hadith, the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, أَرْبَعٌ مَنْ كُنَّ فِيهِ كَانَ مُنَافِقًا خَالِصًا وَمَنْ كَانَتْ فِيهِ خِصْلَةٌ مِنْهُنْ كَانَتْ فِيهِ خِصْلَةٌ مِنَ النِّفَاقِ حَتَّى يَدَعَهَا إِذَا اَتُمِنَ خَانْ وَإِذَا حَدَّثَ كَذَبْ in this hadith, the Prophet ﷺ said, Four qualities. When found in a person, he would be a pure munafiq, hypocrite, a pure munafiq. And if one exists in him, he would have one characteristic of Islam, of nifaq, until he give up this characteristic. So, what is this, what the Prophet ﷺ mentioned? He said, first of all, when he trusts with something, he betrays the trust. This is, he, you can't trust him with anything. This is the first. The second, whenever he speaks, he lies. This is the second. And the third, when he makes a covenant, he acts treacherously, which is he break the, the, the trust or the promise that he make. And when he argue with people, when he argue with people, he would behave insulting, in a very bad way. Uh, in this, in these uh, qualities that the Prophet ﷺ mentioned, we see some of these qualities in Muslims as well. So why the Prophet ﷺ said these is qualities of munafiqeen? First of all, we should know what is nifaq. What is nifaq? Nifaq is to show the iman, to show the Islam, and hide the kufr. So from outside, you believe in Allah, or you pretend, you pretend that you are a Muslim, but from inside, you reject the Islam, you reject the message of Islam. And subhanAllah, this word, nifaq, many of us know the word, but doesn't know the root of the word, where we get this word from. So the scholars, they said, they said originally, the nifaq was taken from nafaq, is the, the <coughs> tunnel in, in inside the, the ground. Because you can't really know what is inside. If you hide something there, you can't really see it. And even the, the scholars, they said, this word was taken from the tunnel that they are bored, which is, we call it the Jarbur. When he made a tunnel, he made one hole to the tunnel that everyone can see. And he make another escape for him, but when he reached the surface, he leaves it. Just leaves it not open, so it will be his escape. So he show you that this is the only entrance, but there is a hidden escape for this animal. And by the way, anyone knows what is the jarbur? We always say jarbur, yarbur, but anyone saw one before? Hmm? Yarbur, jarbur. Jarbul. 
Yes. It's it's kind of rot, but it looks like a kangaroo. Gerbil. Yes, gerbil. Gerbil. Not rot. Also the fox do that. Also the fox. Yes. Many uh, get to uh, outside uh, his. So, so they are poor. Actually, he's like very smart. He has like four tunnels. One permanent in summer, one permanent in winter. Why? Because one in summer, it will be down. And one in, in winter, they will put it on the hill, so no water will come to him, to his house. And he has two in summer and in winter, which is not, he just use it to hunt or to eat, to find food. But he made it in this way, that he made the entrance and he hide the escape or the other entrance. So if you try to catch him, he would escape from the hidden entrance. And exactly just like the Munafiq, he show you something and you hide something else. So he just like the Yarbu or the Jarbu and it's kind of rot as you said, but it's not rot. It looks like a kangaroo and it's jump. It doesn't walk on four, on only two. If you see it, you'll find it's like it's jumping, walking just like the kangaroo, but it's, it's very small. Is it halal by the way to eat Yarbu? <laughs> Just question. Is that for a people? Yes. So it's it's halal in Shafi'i madhab and it's haram in Hanafi. The Hanafi Madhab said it's it's haram, it's not allowed because it's uh, from it's kind of the rat, so they are not allowed to eat their food. But the Shafi'i Madhab they 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 said it's halal. Yes. So let's go back to the Hadith. So now we know why the Munafiq called as a Munafiq because he shows something and he hides something else. But we said the nifaq is to show the iman and hide the kufr. And these qualities, you find some Muslims actually has some of these. So how can the Prophet ﷺ describe some Muslims as a munafiqin? The scholars, they said, we have two kinds of nifaq. We have nifaq u'tiqad, which is and you fought with the belief. You don't really believe in Allah, but you show that to others. And we have nifaq wa amal, which is a nifaq for actions. These are actions of munafiqeen, not the actions of muslimin, of mu'mineen. So whoever acts in these qualities, he shows people an action of nifaq, not an action of Islam. And there is another hadith where the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wasallam said, ayatun munafiq thalath, three. And the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wasallam mentioned, إِذَا حَدَّثَ كَذَبْ وَإِذَا وَعَدَ أَخْلَفْ وَإِذَا تُمِنَ خَانْ When he talk, he tells a lie. When he promise, he break his promise. And if you trust him with something, he would break the trust. You can't really trust him. So now, these things that Allah, that the Prophet sallallahu mentioned, is never, never <coughs> should come from Muslim. It's only for munafiqeen. And if you see any Muslim shows these actions, he shows one or two or three or four according to this hadith from the sifat of the munafiqeen. So we should be careful about this. And alhamdulillah, as Muslims, we all should avoid these bad behaviors. 
these bad manners. And uh, Imam al-Ghazali, he said, why the Prophet ﷺ mentioned only these three? And maybe the Munafiqeen has the Munafiqeen have more than these behaviors. He said, because the Prophet ﷺ wants us to know the Munafiqeen, they don't show the truth with their amal, with their actions, with their qawl, with their talk, and with their niyyah, with their i'tiqad, with their intention. So, first of all, إِذَا حَدَّثَ كَذَبْ When he talk, he lies. So this is the saying, this is the talk. And إِذَا وَعَدَ أَخْلَفْ When he promised, his intention to break the promise. So now even his intention is bad. وَإِذَا تُمِنَ خَانْ And when you trust him, his action is bad. He doesn't really trustful. So the three things that we have, talk, intention, and action, for the munafiq, it's all bad. And that tells us that all the actions, all the sayings, all the intentions of the munafiqin are bad. And this is not how the Muslims should act. So now, the important about this hadith, that we have two kinds of nifaq. Even if we think, subhanAllah, even if we think that we are not the munafiqin of i'tiqad, but we shouldn't even show the sifat of munafiqin. And we know that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said about the munafiqin, إن المنافقين في الدرك الأسفل من النار. and he said إن المنافقين كانوا كانوا إخوان الشياطين. so he said the منافقين in the lowest level of the hellfire. lowest level of the hellfire. and he said they are brothers to الشياطين. so سبحان الله it's the description of the Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم. That we shouldn't show any thing of the sifat of the munafiqin, whether in our saying, not in our actions, and not even in our intention. And I will say this, and I will say this, and I will say this. Today we have a haqiqa, so we should keep it short, inshallah. And if there is any questions? No? Everyone hungry? Okay, that's good. Alhamdulillah. Jazakumullah. Barakallah.